What's up guys, Ian from Eurogamer here, and I'm sad and happy at the same time. I'm sad because I didn't get to go to E3, but at the same time I'm happy because a lot of Team Eurogamer did get to go, and they're starting to filter back some amazing exclusive interviews, like this one Ollie Welsh did with Harold Ryan, the president of Bungie. I've taken a massive chunk of info about their new next-gen game Destiny from the interview and plopped it down onto this gameplay demo yoinked from the Sony conference. Apologies for the slightly dodgy audio in advance, this was recorded on a dictaphone in the incredibly busy LA convention center, so there's a lot of background interference. But it's still very easy to hear what's being said, and it's a great listen for anyone who is super excited for Bungie's next project. Take it away, Ollie. From the demo earlier, it seemed like you have like individual upgrade trees per weapon, is that how it works? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, what you saw in the demo is a good, is it, it's a good example of, uh, I mean, that's a fairly complex upgrade tree. Mm. Um, you know, what was shown there was what we call an exotic weapon. Um, and right. so, the, you know, there are more commonplace weapons and, you know, different value and scale and rarity as you go through. Um, and, uh, but yeah, the, um, right now in the design, all weapons are, are upgradable. So would you say your, your progression is more, uh, like, character-based or, or loot-based? Because it seems like loot seems... I'd say it's quite both. Good. Both? Yeah. So you'll, like, you'll have a character level and you'll get skills and so on as you... As that, you the, I mean, the design, design is still moving around depending on where the balance goes, but absolutely, the, um, we, we want both progression in your player character as it, as it grows over time and, and progression in your, what you accumulate as well. If, if, if loot has, yeah, has so much importance in the game, it's, it's usual to have some kind of trading features. Uh, is that something that you're planning? Is that going to be part of the sort of community uh, features of the game? I mean, it's de definitely, you know, things like, like trading or auction house and things like that are all things that we have, we've, we've considered and uh, what we're not committed to one way or the other at this point. Do you have something in mind or are you, wait, are you waiting to see how, the, how yeah, things are going? Because trends... I think it's Blizzard to discover at the moment trends can change and people's feelings about those kind of features. Yeah, and it, there, there's a there's a lot of potential risk anytime you allow for a con, you know when you're balancing economy when you're doing <coughs> player player trading and, and things like that. And so the um, we're you know investigating all options. I can say. At the end of the demo, you've seen what's a what's a very seems to be quite a dynamic multiplayer public event, as you said. Yep. And then you uh, sort of go into some uh, some more cutscene type story development. Now I know that's not a, a direct segue within the game, yeah, yeah absolutely. But it, like the contrast made me think, sure. how how is that kind of content going to fit into a very multiplayer yep. focused game? Like so this? so you can imagine what's happening for the players on in the demo is that um, they were actually engaged in following uh, a storyline uh, when they went to Old Russia, and they were gonna that storyline was going to take them. Through the wall and on to some some goal as they progressed into the into the farther into the space, and but in the game we have uh, what we call private areas and public areas, and so what happened is they were in a private area when when you see the first character land and then yeah. his first friend joins in progress, yeah. and then as they fight through the wall they come out. And when they come out of the wall, they're in a public area, and that's when their next friend happens to join in progress. But as soon as they're in the public area, they're starting to match make with other players, and um, and so and then the public events are what you saw in the demo is typical of the uh, of a type of public event that'll happen in public areas. Um, there'll be multiple types of public events, and they'll have different you know, flavor and fiction and everything that comes with them. Uh, but they're they're an optional activity that. Uh, is designed to uh, to bring bring players together for cooperative yeah. uh, purposes to facilitate meeting new people, making new friends, and and uh, and you know they'll, they'll be you know they you get XP from them. There'll be some kind of rewards from killing killing off the guys. So you describe that as uh, you said they were matchmaking once they're in the public area. Or yeah. So is it is it is it still a peer to peer based game? Because it's not it's not actually server based for that for that kind of. Uh, well, so it's still a rich local simulation. Yeah. Uh, but there are game servers running behind that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Would you describe it as a persistent world? I would describe it as a persistent world. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's been notable that um, people are, are rather shy of using the term massively multiplayer or MMO at yeah. the moment. Uh, I noticed it with the Ubisoft yesterday as well with their yeah. exciting the new Tom Clancy game. They said yeah. it was an online open world RPG. Yep. Yeah. Uh, MMO, 
has a lot of, I mean, typically MMOs, you know, don't, they don't have a, a rich local simulation. Yeah. The, uh, and so, like, Destiny is first and foremost a, a you know, skill-based action game. It also has a bunch of RPG elements in that you can advance your character and collect loot and advance that loot. Um, and it has a bunch of MMO elements, elements as well, which is mm-hmm. that, you know, there are, you know, well, in our case, it's an uncharted world as well. So the, yeah. uh, it's, you know, as many people as buy the game, which is hopefully a lot, uh, are the potential people that you can encounter as you're playing, yeah. Or if, you know, if they happen to be your friends, you can actively group with them. The art style was another thing that, that, that struck me. I'm, I'm, I'm quite a big fan of it already, I have yeah. to say. It's, it's, it's very unusual. Uh, what kind of influences were you looking at? Um, I mean, a lot of things. I, have, I mean, we, we, have a very, we have a very large, very talented concept art team. Mm-hmm. And uh, the concepts for, for Destiny have been evolving for five plus years. And you know, we, we did a lot of sort of like pure, pure fantasy you know, yeah. looks into it, and a lot of pure sci-fi, and we did a lot of putting those side by side, and then marrying the elements of the two together, and um, and then you know, overall, we started with the goal of making a hopeful place, uh, right. but a place where you know, a long time ago, somebody. So it sort of like took the fictional wrapper, wrapper of a long time ago, something happened, knocked humanity down. We're not sure what it is, um, and and but but there's hope. Nature nature has grown back over the over what's yeah, happening. Yeah. Like the world the world is ready to move move on, but it's being attacked. It's quite hard to come yeah. up with a science fiction art style that's not yes. that you haven't seen before. So. Right. And so it was it was a um, but like that our our concept artists are truly an amazing group of guys and we and we took took a long time going through a lot of pieces to get there. Bungie's obviously known for the incorporation, incorporation of vehicles and aerial action into its uh, into into its action. Are they, can we expect that from Destiny? The um, we're not committed to uh, to player vehicles beyond what you guys saw in the demo. Some little speeder type yeah. things. Yeah. The um, it doesn't have a, a proper name yet, the, <laughs> but uh, uh, we certainly. We we certainly love love vehicles, love building vehicles and using vehicles. The um, but uh, whether whether that's going to be appropriate in the first install to have a wide range of player vehicles or not is we don't know yet. But we're still still moving moving towards that. What was your first priority? Because obviously you, uh, your studio worked on Halo for a long time. And yep. it built it built a world and then built on it and built on it and elaborated it. And then it must be a very different experience to go back to the sort of. To well, start, to start again, yeah. I mean, it was um, it's, uh, it was. I mean, it's refreshing to come back and start again. To uh, you know, mm-hmm. to step back and go, okay, we know we know what we did. We know what we play. We know what we like. What do we want the next thing to be? And um, there was a lot, a lot of pressure as we moved Halo game to Halo game to uh, like keep every feature you had before and add new features because you're not really sure which ones really made people like it yeah. or didn't make them like it, and. Um, it's a lot of pressure to try to carry it all. It's really nice to be able to sort of step back and do that. And then, I mean, the, the artwork is turning. I mean, I, I take some of the printouts home sometimes and just stick them on the wall, just to look at them for a couple of weeks and then take them back to the office and just love it's great art. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's amazing to look at. So uh, It's interesting to hear you say that it's less pressure working on a new IP. It's not, it's not an opinion you hear that often. Yeah, well, it's because we had all the same pressure, you know, for Halo 2 of like, how do we know people are going to like what we're doing? But at the same time, we had to worry about not, you know, not disenfranchising the, the Halo 1 players by changing something that maybe is the thing. I mean, the Halo 1 pistol is a good example of a, we're like, oh, it's overpowered, so we should get rid of it. And then, you know, and you have a whole whole class of player who is in, up in arms over you know, that. And in this case, we get the, you know, it's all new, so, you know, we can... And I guess you can, you can balance the game yeah. as you go as well, rather than yeah. having to. Well, it is. I, I see one of, one of the best things about uh, advancement in technology and connectivity as a game developer. You know, when we shipped Halo One, we couldn't update it. Yeah. There, there's no there's no updating an Xbox. You know, original Xbox. I can't call it Xbox One anymore. Original <laughs> Xbox game. There's there's no patch, no update, nothing. And they're going to print eight million of those things. So, yeah. you know, in this case, it's sort of like, a, well, you know, if we, if we get something wrong, we can we can fix it and tune it and react, and not have to wait till the next game to react to feedback from the fan base. To what extent do you want this 
to feel familiar to, to fans of Halo. That must be a, quite a difficult line to walk, right? Because uh, I mean, you're, you're known for Bungie games feeling like Bungie games. Yep. Yeah, right. And so it's quite like, does you know, do, do the Halo games feel like a Bungie game or a Halo game? Right? Yeah. I mean, like we're still we still have a, we have lucky we have very low turnover. We still have most of the team that made Halo One and yeah. the majority of the team that shipped Halo Three. And you know, for a lot of those guys. Halo art, Halo animation, you know, Halo weapons, all that stuff, and uh, it's why we put so much time into rich concept uh, was to you know define the vision so people didn't you know fall into their their, their work habits. But yeah, in a lot of cases, the best work they could refine themselves to build turned out to look like Halo. That's, that's what they've done. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so I mean, hopefully it'll be familiar. All the best parts will be familiar and. So, I mean, it seemed yeah. like there was a few little callbacks in the demo. You had your, what do you call it, your ghost, uh -huh. which uh, reminded me very much of 343 Guilty Spark, where you zipped off. And um, oh, off. sure. It was floating yeah. and round. <laughs> We've had, we were sort of like, well, should it be round, should it be square? You know, it's, what is a ghost? It's a, your companion. It's a we'll talk more about him, but yeah. Oh, nice. Left us on a cliffhanger there, didn't you, Harold? Well, I'm sure we'll find out what the ghost is one day soon. If you'd like to read Ollie's full interview with Harold, it will be going up on Eurogamer.net sometime next week, so make sure to keep checking back. And in the meantime, don't forget to click the subscribe button for more Eurogamer video goodness. It is your destiny. Ha <laughs> ha. Your mission is vital, Guardian. If you succeed, you will become legend. If you fail, this city will fall, and the last light of civilization will go out. 